People who lost their jobs by going off on a customer. What is your story? Story one. I didn't say this, but I saw it happen. Working at Burger King many, many years ago, I was working the drive through register, which was close enough to the front registers that I could hear conversations. One of my coworkers was taking an order from a lady who kept asking how much her order was and then canceling food on it and changing her mind. I guess she was trying to keep under a certain dollar amount or something. Well, at the Burger King I worked at, any canceled food on an order needed a manager's password. Thanks to one jerk who stole money by putting in someone's order, telling them the total, and then canceling out the order and pocketing the money. So the manager had come by three or four times at that point. And this was during dinner time, mind you, and there was a line of customers out the door waiting to order. Finally, my coworker pulled out a pad of paper and a calculator, and he started writing this woman's order down and holding it up by hand. The woman asked him why he was doing that, and he told her, well, when you make up your mind about what you want, then I'll put it in the register. This pissed off the lady, so she grabbed the notebook and tried to hit my coworker with it, and then he snatched it back from her and told her to get the hell out. My manager was only going to write him up for it, since the manager agreed that the lady absolutely deserved it, but my manager had to follow company policy, but he already had two write-ups on file, so she had to fire him. Story 2. Many years ago, I worked at a Menards. I was a cart pusher, which was nice as I was outside all the time. Anyway, we gather about 25 to 30 shopping carts together and push them up to the entrance where they are stored inside. Now, to get them there, we have to cross the main drive of the parking lot in front of the store, and we always stop and let customers drive by. So as I push the carts up, I stop because I see a guy in a pretty nice SUV. He has actually stopped in front of the entrance. Maybe he dropped somebody off. I don't know. So I'm waiting there to see if he drives off, and then he looks at me and waves me across. Looks like he wanted to finish the call he had gotten or something. So I wave back and start pushing the carts across. I was on the other side when someone clipped me across the shoulder blades and it stung somewhat and pushed me forward. And at the same time, I heard glass shatter. I turned around and the guy in the SUV clipped me with his side view mirror. It had swung close and shattered the window and the door. And I'm just standing there wide eyed. Two seconds later, the guy gets out of his car swearing up a storm at me and how I'm a low life piece of crap and how I'm going to pay for a new window and that I'm not going to get anywhere in life because I broke his window. Now, I'm the type of person that if I was the reason, I'll take the blame for it and I'll fix the problem. But this guy hit me and I blew up on him for about five minutes before a manager finally had the guts to come over and pull me away. I didn't have to pay for a new window as it was on video, but I lost my job because we are not supposed to yell and cuss at the customer. I hate stupid company policies that really spit in the face of common sense. Yes, you probably shouldn't yell at customers, but when the employee is innocent of what they're being accused of, all while sort of being threatened by a customer, couldn't they just let it slide a little bit? I wonder if sometimes the pressure to fire someone comes from the customer themselves, but once you have the video evidence and that they're a fault, why can't we just stand up for our employees? Story three, I didn't get fired, but I was written up and yelled at management. It was the reason I quit a week later. Now I'm in my early 40s. Now for fun, I took a part-time job at a Legoland Discovery Center. I love Lego and love kids and it was a blast most of the time. However, at Legoland, employees built their name tags out of Lego bricks and attached minifigures. Kids who visit can trade minifigures with employees. The rule is that we have to trade because it's fun for the kids. Great. The only problem is that the center I worked at didn't supply any good minifigures. We just built our own from the build-a-figure buckets. I worked in the photo and entertainment departments and noticed that lots of our guests would bring in their extra minifigures looking to trade, but were disappointed by the selection. So I began to buy tons of the mystery minifigs and had a large collection of my own at home. And each weekend, I put a bunch in my pockets and put them on my name tag throughout the day so that I could trade. I liked having Ninjago or Simpsons or whatever, and I wanted kids to leave happy about their trade and feeling like they got something special. Most weeks, I spent $75 or more on minifigures for trading. On May the 4th, I pulled out all my personal Star Wars minifigures because I knew that we would be getting a lot of Star Wars fans that day. I had Vader and many Stormtroopers, etc. This woman came in with her three-year-old girl and insisted that I gave her my Stormtrooper. She didn't have anything to trade, but I smiled and gave it to her. Then the mom went and took the minifigures piece from the build tables and made her daughter trade with me for my Vader. I traded, but was irritated because I only trade one of my personal ones per kid. 
There were lots of employees to trade with. The mom just wanted her kid to have my nice ones. The lady goes on to another area, and in comes a group of likely Star Wars fans. One of the girls has a Ninjago Minig figure in her hand that she had brought from home, and she was looking for someone to trade with and was heading over to my section. I put Admiral Akbar, a fairly rare one that you can only get from the X-Wing fighter build set, on my tag along with Leia, excited thinking that I'm going to make their day. In swoops the lady who demands that I trade all of my figures to her kid who has three minifig pieces. I politely refuse and suggest that she ask the employee a couple feet away since we had previously traded twice already. She got very angry and began screaming at me because she had gone around the center and no one else had anything good. My manager came over and made me give her all of my minifigs, even the ones I still had in my pockets. I was written up for refusing to trade and not caring about the guest experience. I was so pissed because I cared very much about the guest experience. Not the pushy parent experience, but the experience of the kid who just loves Lego, and that's why I spent so much of my own money to make sure that they left with something cool in their pockets. Story 4. A woman came into a charity shop and complained about every single item loudly to the 10 or so customers in there. Along the lines of, this is all garbage, who pays for this? Like, we're some batik with clothes from the back of a van. She clearly didn't understand how rarely new clothes, still tagged, etc., are donated. Then she got in my face about it. I was so angry with her for chasing away the people that came in that I lost my cool. There was nobody left except her since she'd ranted them into leaving. I told her to get out and I didn't give a crap about the clothes or her opinions. She screams her way out of the shop, broadcasting it to everyone on the street. And she came back once the manager was off their break and complained. So I lost my job fairly soon after. I can't blame them. I'd have done the same thing. Story 5. I used to work at a pizza place in a small town when I was a teenager. And one night I took a phone order from some idiot woman. It went like this. Me. Thank you for calling pizza place. May I take your order? Idiot woman. Yes, I'd like to order a large pizza. Half pepperoni, half sausage, and half black olives. Me. Okay. Did you want the toppings combined or separated? Idiot woman. No, I want half pepperoni, half sausage, and half black olives. Me. Okay, so you want a third pepperoni, a third sausage, and a third black olives? Idiot woman. No, I want half pepperoni, half sausage, and half black olives. Me. Yeah, I understand the toppings that you want, but I'm not understanding how you want us to put the toppings on your pizza. Do you want them separated by thirds, combined together, or did you mean put half the amount that we usually put on? Idiot woman. What's so hard to understand? I want half pepperoni, half sausage, and half black olives. Me. Lady, there's only two halves to a pizza. Idiot woman. I want to speak to your manager. Yeah, and I got fired on the spot. It was easier for the manager to just hire another person than it was to lose a customer in a small town. Oh, and the lady wanted the toppings divided into thirds. She told the manager the same thing, and he just went with her math. The Karen also got it for free. No one deserves to be fired like that simply because some entitled Karen doesn't know how to do basic elementary level mathematics. That's pretty ridiculous that you got fired on the spot like that, because is having such a frustrating customer worth firing a good employee who knows how to do math? Those might be hard to come by these days. And what if the crazy lady ends up just using another pizza place in the future? Now you're out the extra money and a decent employee. Story 6. My sister was a manager of a women's clothing store, and at the time she was dealing with some personal issues regarding depression and anxiety, so she wasn't in the greatest state of mind to begin with. A customer came in with a pair of pants that had ripped along the inner thigh seams, which were well past the return period and had clearly been worn and washed. The customer, who was a larger woman, went off on a sales associate, stating that she'd only tried the pants on and that caused the seams to rip, and she wanted a refund. She brought the associate to tears with her ranting and finally demanded the manager, my sister. Enter my sister and the customer starts yelling at her too. Sister promptly tells the customer that her pants split because she was a quite overweight woman and she wouldn't get a refund and to take her fat self out of the store and never come back. She then went in the back, called her boss and quit before she could be fired. Her boss actually was willing to let her stay, but she chose to leave anyway until she could get her depression issues under control. Took a solid year, but she's much happier and healthier now. Story 7. Was a stockroom assistant at a well-known fashion chain in the UK and US. Didn't go off on a customer, but I bloody well wish I did now. Happened to be behind Till's changing hanger boxes when a customer exploded at the trainee cashier, 
demanding to know where her order was. She's screaming her head off now how it's unacceptable that I pay extra and how she made a specific detour to collect her package. She had ordered a jacket in another branch and had paid for next day delivery at the store that I worked in. Customers aren't supposed to collect their orders until they get an email saying that their order is ready to collect. The poor cashier started last week and is basically cowering for dear life. So I take over and ask to see her email, which she explains she doesn't need to because she paid extra, so her package must be here. After 10 minutes of me trying to explain why her package isn't ready to collect and her trying to challenge Krakatoa, she storms off shouting that she'll be having words with the guy who owns our company. I hand back to the cashier and carry on my day. And the next day, I'm prepping our delivery and I get called for a meeting with the store manager. I'm told I'm being let go for gross misconduct, specifically being unhelpful and challenging to customers. Turns out the customer was a journalist for the Daily Mail, and she called our head of company, who she did indeed know personally, and got me fired specifically. Story 8. I wasn't the one fired, but was a witness to the whole ordeal. It was painful to watch, and even though I've left the company more than 10 years ago, I stay clear of the area just in case anyone spots me and asks what actually did happen that day. So it's around the back end of 2005, and I'm working part-time at this printing company while at college. Job's fairly boring, but reasonably easy, and the wages were decent. And as a bonus, was within walking distance of my house. Sweet. This company is responsible for making the flyers you receive in the post office from your banks and insurance companies, etc. Both the junk mail and the actual new cards. Anyways, I've been there for about a year, and a maintenance guy who had started a few months before me had gotten to be friends with me, so we were on the same shift in the same area playing the same games and stuff outside of work. Mark was a generally easygoing guy, but when needed to, would work like a monster. We had just received an order for a new set of flyers to be sent out, pretty much nationwide. The final print order number was something like 12 million flyers. And as soon as the guys came out from the print shop, he piped up saying that the paper quality was too low for the folded paper leaflets to be fed through the machines into the envelopes at the speeds required for the completion date. He asked if there was any chance that we could use slightly larger envelopes or thinner leaflets. He was told repeatedly no. They finalized the style and dimensions of the leaflet. On the newer machines, it's okay because we only get, say, two to three failures, crumpled or torn leaflets, every 10,000 envelopes filled. The older machines, however, are shredding the crap to bits. If we run the machines at 100% speed, they'll run if we are lucky before five minutes of jamming, running them at 60% of normal speed, does stop the problems, however. Mark told the bosses straight away that that was going to go wrong and why and what we had done to fix it. The customer was told there would be a slight delay, and he kicked off, saying it didn't take as long last time and that he wants it done pronto. So we cranked the machines up again. My machine was reasonably new, so I could sneak away using it at 85% speed since the raw chaos happening behind me masked the fact that I was running slow. After a week of battling non-stop jams and overheating, Mark was fed up, and he was on his knees stripping yet more paper out of a machine when the customer popped into the factory for an inspection. Mark goes up to the guy and asks why for this job it was on very short notice and very inflexible. Now, most jobs, we had a bit of play on the leaflet sizing and color, and generally three to eight weeks to print around 10 million. We had gotten seven weeks to do 12 million this time. The customer immediately blows up in Mark's face, telling him that he should be happy for the work and to get back to it ASAP. Mark takes it okay and tried to tell him that it would have been faster and would have saved thousands of his money in labor if he had let him make a few tweaks. At this point, the customer pokes Mark in the chest with his pen and goes, I'll not be told my job by some spanner jockey. Now shush and go back to work. Mark doesn't say anything. He just goes scarlet with a look of pure rage that I've never seen on anyone that hasn't resulted in violence immediately after it. He then grabbed the customer's tie, yanks it down into the feeding gears on the machine that he had just been stripping down. And these machines have a step-by-step -step feed button for when testing a new job. So he hammered the button three times, pulling about 10 inches of this guy's tie in while he screamed. And then as he turned away, he mashed the emergency stop button and then kicked it off the machine, locking it up. He then storms out, never to be seen again. I cut the customer free, and it takes another two maintenance guys nine hours to completely strip the machine and get what's left of the tie out of there. 
So this one is completely more reasonable of a firing. You have zero choice but to fire someone immediately if you assault an employee and basically hook them up to a torture device. I'm getting images like Indiana Jones dangling above a stone crusher or something. I feel bad that that employee just couldn't keep their cool long enough for the situation to subside. In the comments, has anyone witnessed a coworker just sort of snap and take it too far? Story 9. Luckily, I didn't lose my job for this, as the manager on shift was pretty lenient and agreed with me. So, I worked at a pretzel place where you hand make everything. I had just finished rolling and bounced over to the register to help out a customer. The lady asked, Hi, can I get your salted nuggets? But are they fresh? I knew for a fact that they were, I had just rolled them myself and put them in the warmer. Indeed, ma'am, I'd be happy to make you fresher ones if you want to wait 5 or 10 minutes. But I literally had put these in here less than 5 minutes ago. She seemed happy and content. Sure, I'll take those, thanks. Not even five minutes later, she comes back hollering at me that I'm a liar and that I must be stupid because the nuggets were hard, which I knew she was a liar because I had just made everything. What gets me is that she came back even though she came back with less than half of the cup left. Must have been so terrible, right? So after I got called a liar, a moron, and she had the audacity to demand a refund and new fresh nuggets another three times, I turned to a coworker and said, which I quote, Someone needs to help this B-word because I'm not. Long enough for her to hear, and I stormed out of the store to the back room to cool off. Story 10. Didn't get fired for this one, but it was glorious. Used to work in this little Thai place in town, and we had these teenagers who came in every Sunday that were rude and demanding and tipped nothing. One day, they're exceptionally awful to a new waitress, reducing her to tears, and so my boss calls me over. Hey, next time they come, you take them, and you earn that 0% tip. I did a bit of a double take, because she can't possibly mean what I think she means. You mean... And she nods and gives me this little smile that is equal parts devious and smug. A week later, they come in five minutes into my shift, and she seats them in my section, smiles at me, and tells me to do my worst. Here is a fairly detailed account of the wonderful 45 minutes that followed. I wait a good five minutes before going to greet them and bring water. They're ready to order. Oh, I don't have a pen. I'll be right back, I promise. I loudly tell my manager that I'm going for a smoke and then go power smoke a cigarette, which takes me about 90 seconds. They're my only table, and I'm not handling food yet, so I don't wash my hands. And then I reeked of smoke. I take her order, pad thai, no bean sprouts like always, and as she opens his mouth to tell me that he'll have the same thing, I give him the just a minute finger and pull out my phone. I text my fiancé and ask if he wants to get dinner from my place or his tonight. I take his order. I somehow misunderstood and wrote down extra bean sprouts. Weird. Their food comes up while I'm telling my boss and the other waitress a story about my cat. And then I finish telling the story before I get to their food. I bring it out and walk away as they're starting to complain about the sprouts. About five minutes after they get the food, I get a second table. One is a customer from a former job of mine, and we spend a few minutes catching up when I go to greet them. The zero percenters try to signal me as I leave the table, but I just stare straight ahead. I come back for my new table's order and see that their glasses are missing roughly four sips of water. This simply won't do. So I hang their ticket and come back to fill their glasses. I look at the zero percenters' empty glasses, look the guy straight in the eye, smile, and walk away. He stops me as I'm walking over with apps for my new table and then asks for boxes. I tell him that I'll grab them right after I drop off this food. I play a game of 2048 all the way up to 1024 before bringing them one small box. They ask for two bigger boxes and the check. I promise I'll be right back and then ask my boss to keep an eye on the table while I go smoke again. Now, obviously, I don't usually take this many smoke breaks, especially not this early into a shift. I come back again and my boss tells me that they came to her for boxes and to pay and told her that they're never coming back. She voids their check, gives me the 20 some dollars and tells me I earned it. The cherry on top of this funny situation for me is that the boss is in on the intentional crappy service. It's great. It's very Ed debevix like with the vibe going on here. And unlike the rest of these stories, at least this business had the very good sense not to fire, but also reward the server for taking on one for the team. I bet it was actually fairly satisfying and fun to act out, because we all know that we would like to have done the same. If we could only just get away with this kind of attitude toward customers, that would make the restaurant industry just glorious.